so these four are the main things when you want to take a proper scan selection of proper scanner a good retraction technique the correct scanning technique and focus on learning the tips and tricks okay next so three ships that we will be we are using next one so topical anesthetic better to use the uh, spray previously we used to have use meco pain the spray is much better okay so retraction so this is the more uh, most important step retraction definitely after get we have to use combined with finger retraction and mouth mirror retraction and retraction with the scanner head itself okay so four kind of retraction only if you use all these things you will get a correct scan in one and a half minutes our goal is a correct scan one and a half minutes that's it okay next one so in operagate there is two operagate is there one is small one is regular better to use a regular okay only when the mouth is very small you cannot able to insert regular you can use small the same mouth both patient are the same mouth when you use small retracted this is when you use regular retracted see the amount of retraction you can get it retracts fully the lips and the cheeks mm -hmm. and you get more space here when you put the scanner placing a scanner head here in the buccally the buccal sulcus is very easy right mm -hmm. because it, it gives more room here mm -hmm. in the buccal next please then you have to use the mouth mirror when it comes to the molar area lingually when you scan buccally you have to do this right when you keep the scanner here the tongue and floor of the mouth will come and it will produce double scanning the movable tissues when you keep the scanner here there is no need for mouth mirror actually right see here okay see many patients this floor of the mouth will rise and it will come till the implant head some patients it won't be there some patient it will come reserved. extremely reserved patients the floor will come higher actually the floor is not coming higher reserved. the ridge has gone down okay the ridge has gone reserved down okay the next okay. when you scan palatally in the anterior area the lip will come down and it will produce double scan so you have to use two fingers to retract the lip when you cross this segment when you cross this curve when you scan lower anterior from the lingual aspect there is no need to put your mouth mirror on the lingual line use the finger to retract then here we are retracting with the scanner head the tongue but you have to retract the lip also this side okay here when it comes to the buccal side sorry molar distal molar you, you are retracting automatically the tongue will get retracted from the scanner head but how to retract there is no need to use the mouth mirror there is no need to use the finger inside mm -hmm. just pull this after get laterally the lip and the cheek buccal mucosa everything will come out these are the small things if you follow that you will get a success there is no need to rush there is no need to get tense when do scanning you have to keep this in mind and do it slowly the more slowly you do these things the more fast it will be. there is no need to do any muscle power here there is no need to rush just this simple tricks <coughs> it won't take more than 1 to 1 and 1/2 minutes per arch both the arches it is 3 to 4 minutes that's it before starting this you have to prepare the patient mentally okay. we are going to do a digital uh, taking digital impression of your mm -hmm. implants for that we need to retract your lip and cheek and we won't be re uh, retracting your lip and cheek with your fingers we will be retracting with this uh, with this material there will be some discomfort okay abhinning if you pre inform they will be mentally prepared otherwise while doing scanning when you are pulling them they will you know, put your hand no they will stop you then you have to start again so what is the correct scanning technique what the three shape advises 
So this plan we can follow for the dentulous patient, for mm -hmm. the teeth. Mm -hmm. The patient is having all set of teeth, you can follow this protocol. Okay, but for full mouth implant cases, you have to follow a separate protocol. So what is this? Come. For upper arch, we have to start from occlusal surface of molars. Then we have to angle the scanner when passing the centrals. Continue until reaching. The then we have to reach the opposite side molars. Then you can go buccally, mm. like this. Then the And palate. Then palate. Then reach the palate. Then? Same lower, and you have to start from the molars. Go through occlusal. the occlusal surface. Same technique. That's all. When it comes to anterior, you have to do like this. Okay, then occlusal, then cover the lingual, then buckle. Okay. So for full mouth implant scan, how to do it? Same, we have to start from the occlusal surface. Okay. But uh, for uh, dentulous, we will be moving our uh, scanner straight like this. Okay. For uh, implant and biotrim scan, we have to move the scanner slightly buckle only, not fully. Slight rotation. We have to do like this. So what you are doing is, you are not only covering the top of the implant, you are covering the uh, buccal ridge and lingual ridge also. Uh, then after reaching the opposite side, um, occlusal surface of molars, you have to go till the pterygoid. Both sides you have Slower. to go till the pterygoid. Sorry, mm. Then either you can go lingually or you can come buccally. If you are coming buccally, you have to scan carefully. Then reach the opposite side of molar, then come and scan the lingual. See, start from the occlusal aspect of distal molar, jiggle both buccal and lingual, finish the full arch, then you can, you have the freedom to go lingual and then after that buccal or finish buccal or lingual. But whatever it is, when you go lingual, what is the retraction technique you have to follow, right? You have to retract here, mm -hmm. when you go lingually, right? When you scan buccally, you have to retract the tongue. Okay, wherever you are keeping the scanner, the scanner itself retracts, there is no need to retract on that side. Opposite side only, uh, double scanning will happen, so you have to do it. Okay, next one. Okay. Here we did vital suture, this is the second day. Second day means uh, surgery, first day, second day is this picture. Almost all the sutures are uh, dissolving. Here it is a silk. What is the plus and minus of silk? when it comes to digital protocol. The plus is you can use the silk as a landmark. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. See, but if it is moving, then you cannot use it, right? You can select the immovable part, not, not the free end. Okay? There is something called merging of upper and lower uh, scans. Bite only you have to take. edge flap, and the immobile part, uh, the immobile part number, landmark is very close to the bite. And another problem with uh, silk is mm. during designing part, they have to so make it smooth, mm. the silk. Mm. Right? And that is another problem. Okay. Mm. So, this is the video how compare with the Stormant scanner. This is the real time. Just imagine the slide we discussed before, what direction you have to come. When you are doing the upper scan, the palette also will come. Palette also should come. The palette will be used in a later stage. Okay. See the total scanning time. It is 47 seconds only. Even with the palette. So the thing is actually it won't it won't take more than one minute. If for a full mouth implant it is like that. For dental scan definitely it is the same. Actually it should be less. So what is the first uh, workflow? The workflow what is the first step? Scan upper arch, lower arch. Okay. In that we discussed four things. First thing is using a proper scanner. Then, then
scanning proper scanning technique then so learning curve yeah if you have patience and concentration you will learn very soon without concentration if you try to do you will never learn so the second step is jaw relation with the uh, wax rims so how we are going to adapt the form the wax rims uh, wax rims intra orally only so we will be using the aloe wax it contains aloe wax uh, aluminium composition in it. so it is easier to adapt intra orally compared to the red wax and it is easy to scan compared to the red wax and the stability is good compared to the red wax but if it is adapted properly if it is not adapted properly it will be loose so the problems with the red wax is the adaptability is uh, very poor the stability is not good it will move it is not stable and difficult in scanning also okay so anyhow we are not using this the previous one okay so when, when only when you use modeling wax you know then you need to use scanner spray and all mm. right so here with this we we get a clear scan good scan of the aloe wax mm. right so how to make the bite rim intra orally the first trick is use the opera gate okay mm. then topical spray apply panunga then second second is topical spray then warm the aloe wax and adapt like this and add panunga hmm and warm heat panunga add panunga how you are heating this water or uh, spray is so this is also a real time video it won't take more than 1 minute <coughs> start from beginning look closely see first she is pressing mm. okay then she is pressing with the fingers buckle link palately you have to so this will make the wax to tightly adapt with the implants if, if this if this step if you don't do it will be very loose you have to press it from all direction towards the abutment so that it tightly attaches okay then you ask the patient to bite the lower implants will go into it okay so this is how uniformly eat it take a proper size so half pack sheet as a rako okay see how the finger is pressed buckling well right now we have to improvise the bite rim further okay <coughs> so this is after finishing the jawlation you have to finish the upper bite rim first you know the protocol 1 mm or 2 mm of uh, exposure in sesali labial fullness buccal corridor okay correct vd correct occlusion plane alatragus so this are all basic jaw relation that is a separate class okay next one you again repeat okay. the photo is slanted right mm. don't forget to put the mid line and canine canine line. line if you don't do then you have to start from again big headache okay because you are going to do important step here you have to do upper bite rim scanning lower bite rim scanning and the jaw relation bite rim scanning if you do everything else then you come to know that you didn't put the canine line and the mid line then you have to do it again okay and do it properly specialist will do slanting <laughs> but you have to do straight 
next yeah after you finish the canine line midline marking vd jarlation everything is okay approved then you have to do one important step called modify the bite rim you have to modify the bite rim this is a very crucial step if you don't do this then you will be stuck there in this step infinitely you cannot finish the finish the further step what is the modification because when you told no many doctors were telling we couldn't able to scan the bite rims we couldn't do intraoral scan many doctors uh, they were discussing with her the main challenge is they couldn't able to do the implant scanning first they couldn't do full large implant scanning they couldn't do the scanning with the bite rims so how we avoided those problems we are going to tell now okay so the first step is over the implant scanning the first step is over okay so the first modification is exposing the mm -hmm. implant neck even then if the neck is visible that is enough right see when you do the upper arch teeth scanning lower arch teeth scanning when you as the patient to bite and scanning it takes fixed landmarks from upper and lower jaw it connects but here it is a bite rim it cannot uh, connect the bite rim so it is searching for some good landmarks here and here so that it will stitch both do you understand the concept there is nothing fixed here it is pink tissue it is a full block if there is one tooth here there is one tooth here it will imagine this patient is having teeth on this side upper and lower it will take bite right because there is some landmark to connect this and this that is how bite scan works so you should know how bite scan works it takes some landmarks from upper and lower and it connects but there is no landmark here we have to provide the landmark luckily the implant is there so when you take the bite rim scan the scanner catches this the scanner catches this okay the scanner will calculate so this implant is this much length from here so a correct vd comes through. merging happens okay what is the second modification second modification is lingual ah uh, expose the welding wire lingually as not much as non situations huh? not, no, not all situations. situations in which situations you do this when the implant is lingually placed buccal cantilever thus the arc apo bracket la not always or sometimes previous slide see when the implant is close to the labial aspect you can expose this imagine sometimes the uh, implant is too lingual it is a class 2 you are putting more thickness here you cannot expose no you have, you have to dig so much so expose lingually hmm. next one ah so another modification totally three modification is see he, here it is very thick mm. so you have to do this no buccal lingual scanning if it is too thick it won't scan <coughs> because it is too wide so keep it thin to understand this mm. if it is thin when you do like this immediately it will catch here immediately it will catch here but if it is too wide it won't catch it will get confused imagine if it is a natural teeth it is only very thin incisor edges it will easily catch but here it is thick you know now close in morphology or form of elevation stipulations are given smooth surface are given okay double scan double scan double scan wide and smooth next now bite rim scanning upper upper bite rim scanning and lower bite rim scanning yeah one, only one click the same protocol same technique which you use for the implant scanning right mm -hmm. mild buccoling or tilting not very much then buccally and one more thing is if there is a implant here distally mm -hmm. you can completely leave it also ah the margin is no need to there is no need to cover that uh, implant with the bite rim mm -hmm. totally leaving the distal most implant out of the bite rim for example upper terrigate there is no need to cover with bite rim lower if there is some implant in the second molar region you don't have to cover with the bite rim see the this implant now it is left out of the bite rim upper or mid no this is upper 
now we have to keep both the bite rims and ask the patient to bite this step also you will be using after I get right அப்படி <laughs> So this is merging the upper and this is similar to articulation. Mm. Okay, this is similar to articulation. In the lab, uh, the technician will be doing. Okay, so she needs five files, right? Mm. Upper implant scan, lower implant scan, upper bite scan, lower bite scan, mm. jaw lesion mm. scan. So all the five files you will be using, right? Okay, next one. So for that, they need a good landmarks. to merge <laughs> see this exposed implants the technician will use as a landmarks to merge that is why exposing the implant neck is important How many landmarks you need? Four. Three enough. Huh? Three is enough. Sometimes a nerve cell will not work. You may need extra. First, she is merging the upper implant scan with the upper bite, right? Then lower implant scan with the lower bite. That's it, no? they are in the correct vd okay the articulation is done instead of uh, mixing plaster and you know so here also errors can happen if you have fixed landmark if you are given no then it is easy to do the articulation properly hmm. next then comes the designing part okay next next okay now you convert that design into stl file and print in the printer either white or this gray color then you try that intra orally you do any necessary modification but comparatively 3d printing trial is quite easy only no bringing the because from the first step digital protocol it will be accurate okay if you have taken impression model and if you do the scanning because there are some doctors they do like that they do the impression and they will pour model and they will give it to the lab they will do the scanning and all that the accuracy won't be that much good so you have to spend some time in bringing the fitting so it is almost a almost a, it is 100 percent a digital protocol one day there is no impressions we are taking no models no articulations okay next So 3D printing, this is process, right? Sure. So process two types. One is milling and another printing. printing. Okay, printing we have used rarely. Maybe from next week we'll be using more of printed processes. Okay. See, uh, there are only two technologies in making the process construction. One is additive technology, and the other one is a subtractive technology. Additive is 3D printing. It adds. and it brings the teeth but in milling it removes subtractive. subtractive 
subtractive is not good for the environment because wastage is more and you are throwing all the dust you know into the environment so additive uh, you are using only the material which is needed so in that blank when you mill there will be lot of wastage will be there okay and the milling is time consuming for upper and lower arch it takes 7 hours but for printing it will take for the new printer how much time it takes 57 minutes okay so oh, it will be similar for even crown and bridge resin mm. so in one hour you will get even 6 arches you can do right how much are maximum 8 arches, eight arches. in 8 arch one hour bro so cleaning curing you take it as 2 hours okay so in 2 hours you can get 6 arches but here 7 hours you will get only 2 arches so that is the uh, plus and minus of both the things so mass milling time saving is printing but still we don't know the strength what is the material specification how much that we need to get from the manufacturer milling dust in milling dust in my yes. see when it comes to milling it is the milling dust when it comes to printing it is the chemical vapor so both is not uh, good right at least the milling dust is uh, preventable you do proper suctioning and the thing and you keep the area clean but uh, printing a vapor you cannot control this is uh, this is process right mm. yeah, PMM milled one right mm. okay. see if you do the implant scanning and the jawlation scanning correctly that's it it's over all steps are easy and good. yes and if you get proper communication from the patient also mm. right if you are having a good communication channel with the patient because otherwise uh, after the teeth comes they will be telling my teeth is uh, not good it uh, bring out bring in so after 3d trial get a sign they will take it seriously okay next one so adding gum color okay there are four colors available it matches the patient uh, gum very well so ipo namba and the gum color oda avanga odadi end color la irukko and color la sir kudukku okay okay smile panna mudiyum smile panna mudiyum for foreign patient ku odadi rose color irukku ulla gum color match panna sirikkum bodhu and and the papilla zone la lipu dhan theriyudhu adhan adhuk match panna nalla irukku paakkuradhu so the first step is completely different there is no similarities at all it is a completely different area the second step is not valid One. Okay. Here also it is different. You have to do vitamin intra body. That skill we need to do. The fourth is a jarlation. Even after ten years, it will be there, I guess. Okay. You need to know the patient VD and the correct CR. So in jarlation, we are recording two things. One is vertical dimension, horizontal dimension. Right? There is two separate chapters in voucher. No vertical. recording vertical uh, dimension. dimension and horizontal and in articulation <coughs> here we are doing upper bitrim scan lower bitrim scan both upper and lower uh, jawlation scan then merging in the uh, exocut system here teeth setting trimming and tooth setting in the lab here designing in the can after that it is similar wax style is similar to 3d trial but it becomes more convenient you can ask the patient to bite whatever they want you can put the wax 3d trial and send the patient home also right it won't melt it won't dislodge it won't displace the only problem is you cannot immediately do some changes and see if it is a wax style you can immediately move the tooth and you can within 10 minutes you can see another but here you have to redesign it uh 3d so jarlation is the key step if you do proper jarlation you won't get many problem here what is the two areas labial fullness midline midline canine line and buccal corridor right if you see this things whatever you see in the 3d trial you have to see in the bitrim itself whether it, the fullness is correct whether there is buccal corridor okay 
and one more uh, thing is you can get confirmation with the designing you can send the designing itself to the patient and you can get some feedback okay rarely we may need a second trial sometimes the depends if we did some mistake in the correlation or if the patient is asking some gross changes what is the mild changes we can do changes in the designing and we can go ahead with milling the pma but if there is major changes if there is some mistake or error then you have to go for a second trial. but mostly that is not happening right the first trial itself is okay then after fixing and all same only actually it becomes more easier then the acrylic process is the fitting becomes very easier the bite itself uh, no there is no not that much trimming you need many times we do lot of um, bite balancing in acrylic processes almost we remove all the molar teeth right or sometimes we keep the upper and redo the lower these things but after starting this digital work those things are not happening so actually these steps becomes easier